This is CounselCast, part of the Legal Talk Network, and I'm your host, Karen Conroy. When you face a complex case outside your expertise, you bring in a co-counsel for next-level results. When you want to engage, expand, and elevate your firm, you bring in a marketing co-counsel. In this podcast, I bring in marketing experts who each answer one big question to help your firm achieve more. Here's today's guest. Hey, everybody. I'm Paul Counts here, and I'm alongside with... Shreya Banerjee. And we're the co-founders of Marketing Counts, a digital marketing agency, and we're so excited to talk all about marketing and how you can get free organic traffic from Google. Awesome. I'm excited to have my first uh, dual guest. So it's going to be fun on um, the clips to have both of you guys in uh, the show and have you know a nice kind of more well-balanced uh, conversation, where it's not just you know, to me and one other person. It's going to be great. <laughs> Um, so thank you for being here to begin with. And I know that we're, this is going to be a great conversation. We started talking about this for a minute ahead of time. And I know this is, comes up all the time with my clients. And so, like you said, today's big question is how to get free traffic from Google. So it sounds a little clickbaity. You know, it sounds like, oh, I'm not sure. Like that, what, what, you know, that doesn't sound like you know, what everyone else is telling you in terms of like, you need to be spending tens of thousands of dollars on pay-per-click. Um, but I've had these conversations over and over in the last, I'd say couple years, especially, uh, talking about focused on local and all of this good stuff. So that's where we're going to get started. So, uh, who wants to open it up? Who wants to start talking about, first of all, what are we even talking about free traffic from Google? Yeah, so one of our favorite things we love to teach is and talk about is that we're not we're not going to talk about the hottest, latest trends. You know, what we like to joke about is we're going to talk about the not so hot marketing trends because <laughs> yeah, we focus we're not, on we're what, not flashy. what works, right? We're not flashy. <laughs> we're not flashy. And unfortunately or fortunately, however you want to say it, we're just not flashy. Yeah. But it yeah. works. What we do works. It has worked for many, many years mm-hmm. and it's going to continue yeah. to work. Yeah. So you're not like bedazzling it, your proposals and putting all the no. bling and I think that's that's important because uh, a lot of that bling and flashiness is just smoke and mirrors is, you know, another way right. of saying like, right. OK, we're just going to talk about all of these terms that are going to go way over your head and you're not going to even understand it. But it sounds important. So maybe we should just throw money at it. Um, yes. So tell me what what is this that we're talking about and then how does it work? Yeah, so we're talking about Google business profiles or whatever Google decides to call yeah, it. Yeah, they just changed They seem it. to change the name. They yeah, did, yeah. It, it used, changed it used to be called uh, Google My yeah. Business. Yeah, it was Google so My you Business. You might be familiar with that, yes. right? And Google business profile, but irregardless, once they decide, and it used to be Google Maps before that, so it always changes, <laughs> yeah. right? So it's always <laughs> transitioning. But the, the main thing is, is that you can get a profile on Google. Now, a lot of you listening probably already have this. Hopefully. But there's so many little nuances. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't, definitely get one. But there's so many different nuances. I mean, we just had a client, like we just got the notification that, you know, over 20,000 free visitors from Google business, yeah. right? Like right. that's a lot of visitors. And guess what? It didn't cost them a single penny. Yeah. And that's why we love this form of marketing because you know, as, you know, Karin, as you can, you know, reference with, with attorneys, it is very expensive to run paid ads, right? It's the most expensive. I think it's, uh, if it's not the most expensive, it's one of the top, um, most competitive, most expensive keywords that are out there. So, uh, it's, if you can avoid playing that game and just throwing money into the fire with that, uh, then you should, and this is the way to do it. So, What used to be called Google My Business, now called Google Business Profile, whatever this thing is, it's Mm -hmm. about having your little profile account thing on Google. Mm -hmm. And then how are you, um, how are you guys working with your clients to kind of keep that uh, at the top of the map pack and the top of the results and all of that stuff? And how does, how does that work? Yeah. You, oh, go ahead, Dre. You have to keep it updated. That's one of the biggest things. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of people say, you know, one time it's done. That's it. A uh, lot way to keep it up is to get reviews from your clients, uh, and then also get updates 
post pictures, post, even if it's not for somebody to look at, you know, of your clients to look at, it's for Google to see that, okay, this place is updated. The yes. business is updating their profiles. So if you keep it updated and have all the fields filled out, chances are you're going to be up there, one of the top three mm -hmm. uh, showing up on Google. Profiles. Yeah. One. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say I was going to ask for more clarification on the post updates because I know what we do on our end, but <laughs> what does that mean for uh, for you guys? Yeah. So for us, there's the update feature. So if you're looking at Google at a Google Business profile in the back end, the back uh, side from Google, <laughs> there's a section right below it that says updates, like literally post updates, and it's like the second field. Well, Google puts that there for a reason, right? Because they're trying to encourage you to use it, but 90 some percent of people, I mean, a crazy amount of people never touch yeah. it. And what that is, is like, if you're going to go out there and make a Facebook post or an Instagram post, you might as well just make a very quick post like, hey, come on into our office today. We've got a special going on, or here's a picture of our office dog, or whatever right. the case yeah. is, put it in there. Because what ends up happening is if somebody's looking at another attorney's profile, and that's you know a competitor of yours, they're going to see, oh, businesses like yours also just said that. Yes. And so it's so mm -hmm. critical to have those updates, and so few people do yeah. it. I don't care what kind of business you are, you need to update with those types of things. And Shreya referenced another, um, the importance of updates, right? And another really good one is the COVID update right now. Yeah. A lot of businesses mm -hmm. are, are missing that, and Google has made that a priority because they're going to prioritize a business based on the COVID update. So even stuff like... You know, we clean the door handles, like whatever you want to yeah. say, whatever your COVID policy is, say something. Yeah, a lot of firms are offering, Times. you know, they're mm -hmm. just putting it in a little notice saying, you know, obviously we care about your health and blah, blah, blah. Right. And we right. offer Zoom meetings if you want it. And that's really all yes. you need to do to have just basically a notice. And, um, you know, that that matters. It's an update. It refreshes it. Google cares. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of what we do with our clients is... Uh, in terms of those updates is just when you are creating blog posts, which you should be doing anyway, is putting those blog posts on Google as well. And there are, yes. we use software where when we have one blog post, it goes out to all of the different social media. And that includes the Google, you know, it used to be Google Plus or whatever. What do we want to call this? Yeah. Just Google. Let's just call it Google. <laughs> it goes out to Google Giant at Google. the same Google. time. So it literally is no extra effort. You've already got the blog, blog post. You're putting it onto your social. Mm -hmm. Just find software that allows you to also include Google in your posting, and it goes out there. And then Google, you know, gives you a little pat on the back for it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you're one of the few people doing that. That's, that's exactly, which is ridiculous. Like yeah. everybody should be doing that. And yeah, it gives you the biggest bang for the buck, even though it doesn't cost you anything you right. know, compared to posting on social yeah. media. You're going to get more action driven because anytime someone's searching for you, they're not going to go to social media and search for you. They're going to go to Google and search for you. Yeah. So when you have that updated, you're going to get the biggest exactly. bang for the buck. Exactly. Okay. What? Well, and. I I love that point, sorry, just real quick, that point Trey just made about the biggest bang for your buck is so many of our clients that we work with, they think the money's in social media because that's what sounds cool. So they think, I'm going to make an Instagram post and it's going to drive me all these clients. Your clients are not on Instagram. Just as Shreya just said, they are on Google. Yeah. They are searching for attorney in Los Angeles, California, attorney Seattle, Washington, attorney Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's what they're searching for. They're not searching. They're not going to Instagram going, you know, I hope I stumble across an attorney right. today. <laughs> and so like, right. people need to get that out of their system. Yeah. And you're going to get a lot more quality visitors if you make your updates. If, if I had to say get rid of any kind of marketing, I would say, especially for attorneys, do away with your social media. I know a lot of people just went, <gasps> you know, but that's not where your audience is hanging The people out. who just went, or the cart are ones. the social media managers. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you're putting right. me on yes. the job. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I feel like when I usually recommend social media, it's uh, for firms that are doing unique things. They have a unique approach or mm -hmm. they've got some nice video and some good content. And it really right. is a supporting piece of marketing. It is not, you know, when you look at that marketing funnel, you should be doing things at different points of the funnel, the broad, the media, you know, and this is the broad base throwing a wide net out to be top of mind. And that's it. Like that is your yes. goal. It is not exactly. conversion. Conversion happens way farther down and that needs to happen right. on your website. Um, and that's where people are searching through Google. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So yes. Shreya, a minute ago, you were talking also about reviews. 
and this is a place where a lot of clients get a little, uh, you know, I feeling uncomfortable and like, how do you, uh, do you guys have a system for that or a process or, or what do you, what do you say to people who, uh, either don't have very many reviews or they're not sure about it or, you know, how, how do they get better reviews? Just by asking. And I know you just said that you feel uncomfortable asking, but there, what happens a lot of times is, you know, you ask people and say, Hey, go to Google, find this place. And it's, it's a messy right. process, but there is a way in the back and the back end of the Google to get a direct link to, to your di- review yeah. directly. So a lot of times you just click on that and it takes you directly to that review spot, which lowers down a lot of, you know, hustling or like trying to look for stuff. So mm-hmm. it makes it easier for the person who's giving the review to actually do it. Uh, so whether you're doing email follow-ups or so giving them a text, I went to the dentist today and I got a text, you know, saying, hey, thanks for stopping by and make sure you can nice. review. So no different from, you know, from a lawyer's office. Hey, thanks for stopping by. We would love to know how our yeah. service was and how your visit was or consultation was, right? So just through that, because you have to start that engagement piece with your customers anyway, if you want to continue that uh, bond, right? So make it um, easy. Through that engagement yeah. process, exactly. Through that engagement we, process. We actually had an um, uh, insurance agent did this really well. And they mm-hmm. actually got their office involved. And they actually put a $50 gas card on the line for their office assistants <laughs> and basically said, whoever gets the most reviews um, from past clients. Now, again, they were not rewarding the reviewer. Yeah. You cannot do that. That's against the right. terms. Right. But they basically gave a little incentive for the office members to say, Hey, who gets the most reviews? Who can get the most reviews emailing our past clients? This person went from 16 reviews up to over nice. 100 in like three, four months, you know, over time. They did it, you know, staggered it like they should have. But it was amazing how, and they were all like five star. The only four star review they got was from one of their team members <laughs> who didn't want to make it a five star review. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> to make it look authentic. Well, it was like, no. Don't ask your team. Right. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm going to yeah. come back to that in a second. But for uh, at first, when you started saying the fifty dollar gift card, I was yeah. I was going to get I was getting worried for a second because I know you no. can't offer, especially uh-huh. as an attorney, you cannot offer, uh, especially a monetary uh, kind of right. reward to your clients for a review. But that's a genius Correct. way of kind of getting around it is to get your staff members and the people in your office. Yes. You could for sure give them a reward for getting those reviews. So that's a nice, clever oh, yeah. way of um, giving a reward and giving them that incentive without w- while staying mm-hmm. <laughs> like legal, you know. Staying compliant. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, right. And it's also, again, not only is it not okay for lawyers, it's definitely not okay for Google, too, because Google's against that, yes. too, right? Because you can't right. pay for For reviews. anybody, any business. Yes. Yeah. So it's however um, Amazon yeah, seems so, to be okay with it because with Amazon reviews we've well, all yeah. seen like their reviews are getting so <laughs> suspect and you can see in there where they'll say I have been compensated for this review and it's like come on you know that degrades your yeah. entire mm-hmm. review process like why would you do it that it does um, big time yeah big so time. speaking of the the trustworthiness of the review process going back to what you were saying a minute ago about that four star review I have read things where if all of your reviews are five stars, people don't believe it. Mm-hmm. So you actually, it's probably True. a good thing that that, uh, was it an insurance company? It was an em- employee. Yeah. One of their employees left a four yeah. star and their logic was they didn't want to make it but look But it's real. true. It, it makes the, <laughs> yeah. it makes the account look more authentic by having it at does. least yeah. one that's not five star or, um, mm-hmm. especially if you have one that's negative and especially lawyers. I mean, who's not going to have... Yes. A legal case where the opposing person is going to go on and make some, you know, claims and be mad about it. And right. so, of course, the the key that I always talk to my clients about is having the right response. And as long as you mm-hmm. have a, a good mm-hmm. um, response and are professional and you know, kind of call them out without totally calling them out, then um, it really doesn't degrade your account. Um, no. And it's and it's also part of the update thing. It shows Google that you're alive and yes. well. You know, so like right. if you want to respond to those sooner than later. So if you get that, you want to respond within 24 hours if you can help yeah. it, because that shows that even if it's on a weekend, like that shows that you're alive and well. It shows your business is in good standing, which is going to help drive you forward. All these little things trigger the algorithm in, in your favor. So, all right. So go to go back to the big question. I mean, why is this? 
uh, profile Google uh, thing, why does that directly relate to uh, getting all this free traffic? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's at the top of the Google search results, so that's that's mm-hmm. one of the big reasons. I mean, it's um, we we talk about the Google three pack. It's just the way we say it. I mean, everybody's got a different term for it, right? Um, people strive for the six pack. We strive for the yeah. three pack. You know, so that's <laughs> <laughs> that's where you can get Google Ads, Google SEO, and your um, Google My Business, Google Profile now. And right. so it's yeah. at the top, and that's one of the most important parts. And it's also the buyer intent. So mm-hmm. if you think about it, that when someone's searching for it, they're actually looking for your service. Yes. So if you are there, they're most likely to call you. So, I mean, playing right. devil's advocate for a minute, why why does Google allow for this free stuff when they've got the pay-per-click sitting right there? Mm-hmm. Doesn't it seem kind of crazy that Google is sort of cannibalizing their own sales? Yeah. No one does it. <laughs> Yeah, that's because it's old. It's been there. Mm-hmm. It works, but it's old school. People want yeah. new stuff. Right? Yeah, they want and the latest and the greatest. The, so no one does, and it. it's work. The other factor is, yeah. yes, it does <laughs> yeah, take it work. Yeah, it takes work. And the other factor that we see is that Google upsells you inside. Yes. That, right? So when you're inside your Google profile, mm-hmm. they do the one thing that we caution businesses against, which is they tell you, "Oh, hey, um, purchase your clicks through here," and it's just a simple like process. But basically, I kind of liken it to a calculator with huge numbers, you know, like it's basically the easiest way to set up your <laughs> your ads, but it's the absolute worst way because you're going to pay $20 a click right. there rather than $10 mm-hmm. a click or less, hopefully, $5 a click, a dollar a click inside an actual Google ad setup. So they monetize that really well because they make it extremely easy. And so inside there's that upsell feature. And then they also have inside Google My Business, the Google Sites, which is a page you could create. Yeah. And then you're kind of stuck, and then yeah. they upsell you there for a monthly fee. So, like, they have upsells. So that's probably one of the other reasons that Google's like, hey, use this, because they know their numbers, and they're going to get a certain number of people to upsell. Yeah. So. And they don't need your $20. Yep. They've got funnel. lots of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So have you guys had much experience then with the Google, the local service ads with any of your clients, with tying that into their profile? Some minimal. So like I said, the gen- generally speaking, when we get better results, it's not really driving the straight traffic right to the Google My Business profile. It's actually sending it straight to their website using the advanced editor inside of Google yeah. Ads because you end up spending a lot more with the Google Ads version or the, the Google um, Business <laughs> Profile version of it. So yeah. yeah, so you end up spending quite a bit more that way. So overall... Your, your best results are just coming from straight Google profile, not mm-hmm. spending any money. And I mean, yes. the, the short version of the story is just get out there, post regularly, get some and get some good reviews, obviously. And the more competitive yeah. and, um, you know, dense your market is, the harder that's going to be to compete with all the other guys. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you right. do need to spend you know money on ads for some of the other you know niches, especially lawyers. They can be very competitive, yeah. but you should definitely have that. And like Trey referenced this earlier, but if there's a spot in your Google My Business profile, fill it with yeah. something. You know, a lot of people just think mm-hmm. like, well, this isn't relevant to me. Still fill it <laughs> because you're you'd be shocked how many people leave this thing blank. You know, majority of businesses don't fill out every single field. Oh, the other the other tip, um, which is reference, is pictures. Oh like, yes, I can't tell you how important pictures are to your Google My Business. It's insanely important. So office pictures, pictures outside your office building, pictures of stock photos of a, of a legal doc, whatever yeah. you can get away with. But you know, staff pictures, staff parties, uh, animals. You know, if you have animals in your office, like whatever, <laughs> like post that. On a regular basis, even just once a month, post a new picture, update your office picture. It's amazing how much of a difference that yeah, makes. It's so weird. I, I don't know why so they huge. put so much weight on the imagery, but they do. They do. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. we say never to do a blog post without a photo. I mean, there's a million places right. you can go get free stock right. photos. So it doesn't have to be yeah. a piece of art. It just needs to be a photo. Uh, yeah. Right. And I find even... Other um, media as well. So if you've got some videos, you got some other stuff in there, the more the better. The more stuff, you know, yes. it's, like, it's kind of like Google's a hoarder and they just want to collect all <laughs> the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, just throw it's it true. all out. I never thought about it that way. Google's a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> 
That could be a whole other show. That would be a great topic. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Google yeah, the hoarder. Exactly. <laughs> what is the? Uh, yeah, the, it, we could have like the whole title of the hoarders show with you know like we're bringing in, um, but we don't really want to clear it out because you know Google wants all that stuff. They want the pictures mm-hmm. from five years ago yeah, for whatever it's reason. Weird. Like Google, Google yeah. clean it out. It's getting dusty. Like, <laughs> yes. But I mean there is some there is a lot to be said for um the the photos being current and you know and not yes. letting them get old and dusty too. Um mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. okay, awesome. Let's move on to the book. Shreya, as you know, our audience is full of tireless lawyers who don't have time to read books. So what is one book that you've read that is worth it? I, the current one I'm reading, and I don't have time either, so I'm an audiobook person. Uh, the Lean Startup. Oh. Greece. It's amazing. So I have a lean background. I'm a lean Six Sigma black oh, belt. Oh, cool. And was in the manufacturing field for a long time. So it's interesting to see how those traditional Toyota production system, how to build cars, like those concepts apply to a startup and the yeah. business. Yeah. And that's actually how what we apply to our marketing processes because mm-hmm. that's what I bring to the table here. Um, so it's, it's kind of cool to see those principles applied elsewhere. So that's kind of the opposite setting. of what we were talking about with hoarding, like you know, like cleaning it all up. And so what? Right. Um, so tell me more about it. I mean, what have you kind of taken away? And I feel like with businesses like ours, where they're more service based and you're not in a big factory, it's hard to imagine how to take um, those concepts and apply it to. Um, you know, a not factory kind of business. Right. Well, as a, as a service-based uh, company, you still have processes, right. right? You're still doing things. You're still providing value. So the first thing is to really map it out and say, where am I not providing that value? And let's try to eliminate that step. I'm doing something I'm doing like for marketing, for example, I'm running Facebook ads, but it's not giving me anything back. Why am I doing that? So that's a, a waste that you will take out and then focus it somewhere else, maybe on your Google My Business exactly. now, right? So it's it's still trying to figure out where the waste is and trying to lean out your yeah, process. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like there are so many different messages and places that everyone is trying to be and um, you just end up dividing your attention and dividing your budgets and, and right. whatever, where in the end, if you you know take a step back and look at it, you know the top two or three places where the majority of your business is coming. And you know why are you wasting your time and money and everything on all these other things? So just throw it all in there. Yeah. Um, okay, that sounds awesome. Exactly. We will obviously link to that and have that in our library. Um, and Paul, what's your book? Yeah, I'm reading Uncover Your Difference Ooh. by Mira Coppola. What is that? Yeah, it's such a great book. It's about how to differentiate yourself, you know, and stand out in a noisy world. And obviously, I've got a marketing background. Trey's got the lean background with some marketing. And so, you know, that, that book really speaks to me because I'm always about how can you be different in the marketplace? You know, how can you stand so, out? And what, so, always looking for those kind of so things. So, what does he talk about? Is it like positioning kind of marketing or? Yeah, it's how do you position yourself? Um, how do you stand out in a, you know, again, in a noisy world, right? There's so much yeah. noise, so much content out there, so much social media noise. So, how do you differentiate yourself? And it kind of gives you a process for standing out, you know, and, and being. Well, different. that's perfect when it comes to even this Google profile stuff because, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of my clients and the people were talking to are in bigger city areas and they are even if they're getting out there and there's not not everybody doing the google stuff they are still there's a lot of other people doing it and so it's like how do you do it differently exactly yeah and that's exactly it yeah it's how can you be different and that's that's the key difference maker in marketing i mean there's if if you think of it there's hundreds of google my business profiles so if you can stand out and be slightly different from the crowd with maybe it's a picture you used, maybe it's an angle you used or something. Even even the differences we talked about, like actually doing posting an update, yeah. you know, that's a difference from right. you and ninety percent of the other attorneys or churches or organizations or businesses or whatever that you're finding insurance agents out on Google My Business, you're gonna be different just by doing that one little thing. Yeah, I think that's important. I feel, I think people feel like I have to be different by completely reinventing the wheel and I have to, you know, yes. and it's not. Maybe, like mm-hmm. you said, your difference is that you posted today and they didn't. And that's it. And that, right. and, and maybe that's yes, your exactly. difference, period. And that's all you need to mm-hmm. do. Just be consistent, be out there, and right. uh, be present. 
Um, we like to say consistency counts. Oh, uh, like I'm say. sure you do. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure everything counts. When, yeah. Everything yeah. counts, everything exactly. Counts. Like, it sounds, counts. Yeah. I'm sure you find a way to throw that in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do. It nauseates Shreya, but we do. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so Shreya, what's one big takeaway you want uh, listeners to get from the episode? Consistency. Yeah. Just stay consistent. We just talked about it, right? If you consistency counts, like we just said, and if you're consistent, you will you will make it. like we work with so many high influential people, right? The one thing that we've noticed is there's no difference between us and them, and it's just that they are consistent. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's it, Paul. Yeah. What's your big takeaway? Yeah, the big the big takeaway is just you know do do the job. Like don't and also don't um, don't overcomplicate. Yes. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't get too mm-hmm. excited about what's hot what's new there are not so hot marketing trends that you can do like google business profile which has been around for years and we talked about the different names but it's still a highly effective way to reach your audience when everybody else is going to teach you the newest latest hot trend and there's something to be said about consistency i mean i've been in marketing for 23 years dating back when i was 13 and i'm still at it because I remain consistent. And honestly, some of the stuff that worked 20 years ago when I was getting started with SEO is still the exact same process today. It's just fewer people do it because there's all these new things Because it's the new shiny out. stuff. And I say this all the time. Yes. I think people really downplay the broader definition of marketing. And I've even talked mm-hmm. to people in like these small towns in Tennessee where they are still doing yellow page stuff because they work with right. other people who still have a yellow pages and it, there is nothing yeah. wrong with that if it works so no you know, exactly going out to networking event that is still marketing going out and oh, you gosh, know doing yeah. all these things because they're not online i think people have kind of set those aside and sort of forgotten about it and it's like this is all still marketing it all matters mm-hmm. and if it works why yeah of course keep doing it um, so yeah. yeah, I think that is such an important point to make, and I hope people are kind of, uh, kind of keying in on that. Um, so Paul Counts and Shreya Banerjee are the co-founders of Marketing Counts, and thank you guys so much. This was such a great conversation. I really appreciate you being here. Thank oh, you. For thank you. Us. It was fun. Thank you for listening to this episode of the CouncilCast podcast. Be sure to visit our website at council-cast.com for the resources mentioned on the episode and to give us your feedback. If you enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate it if you could rate and review the podcast on Apple and subscribe to your favorite podcast platform. See you on the next one.